The Eagles look to get a little revenge for last year's playoff loss against the Buccaneers. That and more on a crossover episode of Locked On Eagles and Locked On Bucks. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome into this crossover Thursday episode of Locked on Eagles and Locked on Bucks, your daily podcasts covering the Philadelphia Eagles and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making Locked on Eagles and Locked on Bucks your first listener view every day. Don't forget you can subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, you can follow along on Twitter. I am James Yarko, the host of Locked on Bucks at jyarko underscore bucks he is gino camarelli host uh one of the hosts of locked on eagles on twitter at gc24 underscore football and we are here with you every monday through friday along with the everydayers and we would like to share our appreciation for your continued support of these shows this crossover Thursday is presented by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL all lowercase to win $50 instantly when you play $5. The Buccaneers are looking to bounce back after a tough loss to the Denver Broncos. And we're going to talk about what's going on with them coming up in a little bit. But let's start with the visiting team, the Philadelphia Eagles, who just got a huge road win over the Saints. Buccaneers fans. Uh, thank you for that. But they come off that big road win last week. Gino, some major injuries to some key players there on Philly's offense. But what is the biggest story on the offensive side of the ball this week in Philadelphia? I think you hit it right on the head. Who's actually going to make the trip down there at the wide receiver position? And I don't know what it is about the Bucks, but anytime they're going to be playing the Eagles, A.J. Brown just seems to be injured. But it was an unfortunate soft tissue injury. Hopefully he comes back after the bye next week when we face the Browns. Devontae Smith, he could potentially be out with a concussion after a vicious blindside hit on him. You lose a rotational player in Britton Covey who was getting a decent amount of target share with A.J. Brown being out. So you're potentially saying your number one wide receiver in this game might be Jahan Dotson, but the other part of it is if you bank on those guys that you have hit home runs with in the past, Saquon Barkley, Dallas Goddard, like they did on that last drive to go and beat the Saints last week, that's where your haymakers are going to come in. Those are the guys you got to worry about. But when it comes to playing personnel, I don't even know if you have enough bodies to play 11 personnel with this Philadelphia Eagles team come Sunday. Yeah, and that's kind of the interesting kind of caveat to this game for the Eagles, right? Is that they do have the bye next week and the Eagles are a team with playoff aspirations. They feel mm -hmm. that, you know, they can win this division. Who's being led by the Washington commanders, just like we all saw coming. So do they rush back AJ Brown because of the, the, the injury to Devonta Smith, knowing that you have that buy on the other side and, you know, that's when you're really going to need him to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And hopefully Devonta Smith is healthy. You know, the Bucs are, are dealing with their own guy that's had a concussion that's been out for two weeks. And you're right, that, that hit on Smith was vicious. Then there was a late, like, spear to his unhelmeted head mm -hmm. that, that went uncalled. So it's an interesting balancing act that Philadelphia has there. Of They want to win this game, obviously. They, they would you know, this might be a game that they need to win when it comes to the end of the season for tie-breaking purposes, the, the strength of schedule, the, the conference record, all of those things. But you don't want to do it to the detriment of your star players. That's exactly it as well. And especially if the defense, which you got to talk about that side of the ball, can play as well as they did last week. And I'm not saying they're going to pitch a, a near shutout like they did last week when it came to keeping a team that scored 90 cumulative points in the first two weeks to only scoring one touchdown. That was huge for them. But I think ultimately with this defense, how do we keep everything underneath for Tampa Bay because we know Chris Godwin, Mike Evans. I've seen Mike Evans eat this Eagles team alive for a decade and a half now. I saw it back in 2015 when him and Jamin, James Winston came up to Philly and danced all over Lincoln Financial Field. Those guys are going to make plays downfield. 
But the Eagles did a really good job last week taking away Rashid Shahid in the downfield areas. He's one of the best guys in terms of getting those explosive plays. They allowed a ton of explosives in the first two weeks. I'm sure Tampa will have opportunities to do that in this game. But if their defense goes out there and establishes the line of scrimmages with guys like Jalen Carter, who had a one of the best games you'll ever see when it comes to a tape perspective from an interior defensive lineman. And Jordan Davis looked really good and their secondary has looked really good. It just comes down to how many times can the defense bail you out yet again? The offense, they have to get hot. They haven't scored any points on their first two drives of the first three games. So it's going to be in balancing act. Can this Eagles team defensively and offensively play 60 minutes? And they have yet to do so. Yeah, and something that I wanted to ask you about, from, from the outside looking in, we kind of saw it with the Falcons game, and then we started to see it happen with the Saints, where this Eagles defense, while playing really well, still seems to have these snake bite moments in the fourth quarter where they start to relinquish these leads. You know, is that a fair assessment? Is there something going on? Is this kind of the same thing that we saw transpire last season? What's kind of going on with, with some of these fourth quarters? Is it on the defense or is the offense not playing their part down the stretch to maintain these leads? I think last game, it falls on the offense. There were so many opportunities where they got the ball and they just did absolutely nothing with it. And it took until the fourth quarter to really get that team rolling. And like I said, this team hasn't scored a point on the first two drives of any of their three games. The defense in that Falcons game, they were like Swiss cheese. But Vic Fangio, our defensive coordinator, in his meetings throughout the week, he said, I have to be better to put these guys in a better position to succeed. And I think he did exactly that last week. And a lot of it in the end of that Saints game, I mean, Jalen Hurts and that offense, they were moving the ball. They put up nearly two to one in terms of yards and production. It just comes down to those snake bitten moments. Like you said, they happen to be at parts of the game where it's an apex. It's so influential. I mean, the first drive of the game, Jalen Hurts leads the team down to the end zone, throws an interception in the end zone, which was exactly what happened the week before where on the final drive, when they need a big play, he threw an interception as well. The defense won them that game last week, but at the same time, you don't win the game against the Packers if your offense was at, wasn't as good as they were. They had to go out there and score 34 points. You were in that game against the Falcons because your offense had a nine minute, 17 play, 70 yard drive to wind the clock down and essentially end that game. But the offense and your head coach more than anybody, he's the guy at the blackjack table that you don't want to be sitting at the same table with him because he's going to make the wrong call and lose everybody money when he's supposed to, he's just supposed to check. He's not supposed to take a card and he hits, takes the 10 away from the dealer. Now we're all walking out broken. That's what happened week two. But I think this thing will eventually even out once the offense and defense start to get that balancing act. All right. And of course, I have to ask, this is the Eagles Buccaneers crossover. What's going on with Devin White? Oh, it, it, it's a tough situation for Devin White because he was injured a lot of the, the influential time of the offseason, which was. Vic Fangio needs to find the guys that he trusts. And once he finds those guys, he's not going to allow other guys to come in and, and take that job away. And he found Zach Bond, who happens to be a really good chess piece for this Eagles defense, who's leading the team in tackles. Nicobe Dean comes back from an injury and really is turning into the player who this Eagles team drafted in the third round a couple years ago. There were moments in the preseason, and I'm sure Tampa Bay fans saw it last year, in coverage, he just does not see the field very well at all. And it was so evident when he's going against twos and threes in the preseason. You can't lose your job in the injury due to an injury in the NFL. It's the biggest lie that I've ever heard because it happens all the time. And I think it's unfortunate because Howie Roseman, he gave him that deal with, I think, aspirations of him being an influential piece. But there's an element to the coach personnel checks and balances that 
we're not just seeing with Bryce Huff. I think with Devin White, we're seeing it with Bryce Huff as well, where the personnel department has one thing in mind. The coaching staff has something completely different. And I think Devin White is, he's just a victim to his circumstances, but I think he's handling it like a pro. He's not saying anything that's just out of bounds. And he's still one of the guys that the team looks to as like a vocal leader at moments in early on in practice sessions. So I don't think he's out of the equation. Like I think they want to hold on to him like they did Rashad Penny. I think he's a much better player than Rashad Penny was. Like Rashad was washed last year. Devin White, if one of those guys go down, he's not a, a bad tool to have in the back of your pocket come the middle of the season, let's say. I mean, we're playing 20 plus games if you want to win a Super Bowl. Who's to say that he can't come in in the middle of the year fresh and then all of a sudden he looks like a rejuvenated piece to this defense that they might need? All right. Well, the Buccaneers are looking to get back on track. That is coming up next on a crossover Thursday episode of Locked On Eagles and Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You all know how much I love going to live events, concerts, sporting events. I'm constantly talking on this show about a concert or a game I'm getting ready to go see. In the first place, I'm checking out what I look for tickets is game time game time has a new feature called game time picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier game time picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets and with all in pricing i know exactly what i'm going to spend up front so there's no surprises when i get to check out if you're interested in going to see this weekend's bucks eagles game Tickets start at just $133, including fees. That's the all-in pricing. Turn on that toggle switch on Game Time. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? game time. Thank you again for making Locked On Eagles and Locked On Bucks your first listen or view every single day. Every day, just make sure you're coming back tomorrow. Locked On Eagles is going to give you your final preview of the game. I will be doing the same over on Locked On Bucks. But in the meantime, check out the new Locked On NFL today. It is twice a day with the madman Tyler Rowland and the barber Tony Wiggins, plus the locked on local experts giving you an unprecedented view across the league. It's locked on NFL and it's twice a day. Check it out as your second listen. All right, we're going to flip things over to the home team and talk about the offense a little bit. An offense that decided not to show up against the Denver Broncos while they made Bo Nix look like Broncos Peyton Manning. Uh, it, it was it was hideous. It was ugly. And uh, that freaking Sean Payton, we just can't seem to uh, escape his wrath no matter where he is. But on the offensive side of the ball, things are starting to look up a little bit for the Buccaneers. On Wednesday, Luke Gedeke, their starting right tackle who has been out the last two weeks with a concussion, did return to practice. That is huge. It is huge in terms of run blocking. It is huge in terms of pass blocking. Baker Mayfield in the in week one against Washington with Gedeke on the field was sacked one time. Over the last two weeks against the Detroit Lions and the Denver Broncos, he has been sacked a combined 12 Ooh. times. That is insanity. That is absolute insanity. And Luke Gedeke elevates the rest of the starting offensive line. He's not the best offensive lineman. That's obviously Tristan Wirfs. But the faith, the trust, and the collective unit is better when you have all five starters out there. The Bucs have also been terrible in the run game for the most part. Gedeke is going to help that out, but so is the the fact that Bucky Irving is now going to have an increased role that Todd Bowles said that he has earned. Bucky has had almost half the offensive snaps of Rashad White, and he has almost double the production. He has the Bucks' two longest runs of the season, a 31-yarder in week one, a 32-yarder in week three. But even if you remove those two runs 
from his yards per carry average, he is still getting nearly four yards a carry compared to Rashad White's 2.1. So Bucky Irving brings an elusiveness in electricity. And I'm, I'm sure even Eagles fans saw that, that Madden joystick move that he put on the Broncos defense on Sunday. So Bucky Irving getting a larger piece of the offensive pie can go a long way for this Bucks offense. I'm not surprised by that as all. As you could see, I'm wearing my Oregon Ducks hat. I'm a big proponent of Bucky Irving. It was only a matter of time before he had this breakout. So, James, for our Eagles listeners, let's say things aren't going right in the run game. How are they trying to establish the pass? Are they doing that out of play action, even though the run isn't working? Or are they just saying, we have Mike Evans, we have Chris Godwin, and we can kind of just line these guys up, play our game, and we know they're going to win those man-on-man matchups? The Bucs really haven't used play action very often this year. And you can look to what the Rams do offensively. They don't use play action very mm -hmm. often. Liam Cohen, the offensive coordinator in Tampa, obviously from that Sean McVay coaching tree, runs a similar offense. So establishing the pass, it's Chris Godwin. It's Chris Godwin all day long. He is one of the NFL's leading receivers. He has a touchdown in each game this year. Last year, he had two on the season. That was it. He's already up to three. When it's third down, it's Chris Godwin. When it's first down, it's Chris Godwin. When it's really Baker running around, scrambling for his life, who does he look to get the ball to? Chris Godwin. Godwin is playing that 2021 Cooper Cup role mm. in the Bucks offense that we saw Cup dominate with in the Rams offense. So, Mike Evans is still going to get his. He's still going to make incredible catches. He's going to have explosive games. But so far, Detroit and Denver have been bracketing coverage over top of Mike Evans, making sure that he's double teamed. He's already getting the best corner on the team. Then he's getting doubled. He's having safeties crash down on him, and it's leaving Godwin in advantageous one-on-ones or flat out wide open. And Baker's been able to take advantage of that. So a heavy, heavy dose of Chris Godwin is coming on Sunday. Yeah, it looks, uh, according to the, some of the stats I have here, that they play out of shotgun 62% of the time. So you're going to see a lot of just lineup, probably a lot of motion as well. But the one area that I'm looking at with Baker Mayfield What's going on with him being 31st in 20 plus air yard throws down the field? That's one thing. Are they just keeping everybody underneath, like you're saying, bracketing Mike Evans? Or has he just been playing cover six world? We're going to just check down to death like these guys are doing in this modern day where the downfield explosive weapon threats aren't as lethal as they have been in the last couple of years. It's been a lot of slice and dice. It's been a lot of taking what the defense gives them, which is why Godwin has gotten so many receptions. They're really just trying to keep the drive moving. Mm -hmm. It can be three yards here. It can be five yards there. It can be right at the sticks. Not a lot of deep shots taken so far this season. He had a really nice uh, you know, deep touchdown pass to Jalen McMillan in week one. Mm -hmm. He had a really nice, I wouldn't call it deep. You know, it was a 20-plus yard uh, touchdown pass to Mike Evans in week one. Uh, even Godwin's 41 yard touchdown catch in, in week two was a catch and run. Godwin did most of that with his legs. So they're really not taking a lot of deep shots, which has helped Baker's accuracy. It, it has helped his efficiency and it has allowed the Bucks to sustain some of these really, really long drives. On the flip side, though, talking about the defense, this is where Eagles fans are probably going to start licking their lips a little bit. They give up 88 rushing yards to Jaden Daniels in week one. Bo Nix looked like a, a dual threat machine. I didn't know if it was Bo Nix or it was Josh Allen, the way he was using his legs. No sacks for this Buccaneers defense in 97 consecutive pass attempts. Wow. Think, of, think about how much sacks are up through the first three mm -hmm. weeks of this NFL season. The Bucs have none in 97 consecutive pass attempts. Now, what might change that a little bit is Vita Vea returning to practice on Wednesday. That could be huge. I figured if they were going to get any of these injured guys back outside of Luke Gedeke, 
Vita Vea was an outside chance, but similar to what we were talking about with the Eagles, the Bucs have a short week after this game. They have the Falcons on Thursday night. Do you really want to rush Vita Vea and Kalisha mm. Ancy back onto the field, then ask them to turn around and play four days later? If Vita Vea plays, I would expect it to be a limited role, uh, mostly on rushing downs, help contain Saquon Barkley in that aspect. But no team has had more pass attempts against them than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they are the only defense in the NFL to not allow a passing touchdown this season. How you set that up, it kind of just plays into the personnel that the Eagles have, right? It's like if you're looking at the rush game, like are, is Tampa able to to set the edge? I think that's probably one of the problems you've seen against Jaden Daniels and Bo Nix. And Jalen Hurts, he's one of those guys that he'll take advantage of those areas. But the one thing, the Eagles, their entire right side of their line left the game last week. Jay, uh, Lane Johnson goes out with a concussion. Makai Becton looks like he has a wrist injury. We'll see if both of them are going to play. But you talk about the limited amount of sacks, the amount of pressures that the Eagles have given up where Jalen Hurts has escaped the pocket, sometimes for good, sometimes for bad. It's going to be really interesting to see if a Bucks team that you're saying, when, when is when is the dam going to break? Like this, it can't go 970 snaps and not get a sack, right? Like it has to hit home at some point. And the same thing for Jalen Hurts. Like when is he going to stop escaping the pocket and step up instead of escaping the pocket? So I think it's going to be a real fun game on the right side of that line, especially if Vita Vey is back. I would shade him to Tyler Steen's side, who is our backup guard and just, I, I don't know, double team him and let everybody else try to win their one-on-ones. But when it comes to playmakers on both sides of the ball, I think the Eagles, once again, they're going to have to protect it. There's guys on that back end of the Tampa Bay defense. Like you said, they haven't allowed a, a passing touchdown. Jalen Hurts has given other teams opportunities to make plays on the ball. And I've said this the past three, cro two crossovers, actually. I said it to Ross Jackson last week. I said, if Tyron Matthew has an ability to keep his eyes on the quarterback, Jalen Hurts is going to let him make a play on the ball. What does he have? An interception. Jesse Bates, the week before that with host Aaron Freeman, I said the exact same thing. I hope that it's not three for three with Tampa. You have to play what the Eagles do best, run the ball against that Tampa front that hopefully is going to allow opportunities. But I still would go over to FanDuel and bet a Jalen Hurts anytime touchdown because he's he, has, he just has the sickness right now, man. He's going to give you a couple chances. All right. Well, what are the three things that each of these teams need to do to get a win in week four? That is coming up next on Crossover Thursday. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Right now, the Buccaneers are two-and-a-half-point home underdogs against the Philadelphia Eagles with an over-under of 45-and-a-half. But if you want to get in on that Thursday night action, the Dallas Cowboys are five and a half point road favorites against the New York Giants with a 45 and a half point over under. You can get all of this started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. You don't even have to win. Just place the $5 bet. $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's all at FanDuel.com. Wrapping things up here on a Crossover Thursday episode of Locked on Eagles and Locked on Bucks. And of course, Crossover Thursday is presented by Price Picks. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL, all lowercase, to win $50 instantly when you play $5. Gino, this is the third time that these two teams have met within the last calendar year. This is the rubber match. You know, I, I did this with, with Matt Derry of Locked On Lions. The Lions were 2-0 and heading into that game. This one between the Bucks and Eagles, it's 1-1. One and one. Let's see who is able to come away victorious and, and win the series 2-1, to one, I guess we should say. So if it's going to be the Eagles, what are the three things that they have to do in order to get this road win at Raymond James Stadium? 
I've been holding off on this one, and this is number one through and through. There was a moment last year where Todd Bowles created a paradigm shift in Philadelphia where Jalen Hurts had no answers against the Blitz. This year, he's been exceptional, and I think it has to come after that game against Tampa where they blitzed him to death. Number one, understand the Blitz is coming and have all the answers. Number two, like I mentioned with Jalen Hurts, put a stop to the turnovers. You're the quarterback. Lead by example. When you're good, you're a top five quarterback in terms of EPA per drop back. You put this team in a position to succeed week in and week out. You have to go and lead by example. You can't continue to turn the ball over. Number three, just run the damn ball. It's so easy. You have the best running back in football right now with the best offensive line. Even when the right side of that line went out of that game, it did not miss a beat. And if you're without your top two weapons on the outside, you have to play the songs that hit. And it's the Eagles run game. No matter what, go down to Tampa and control the clock. It's probably going to be a hot, humid environment right after the hurricane rolls through there. Control the clock. Make that Tampa defense tired. Take care of the football. When when we say these three keys each week, I'm like, it's so simple. Why, why don't they just execute these? This seems like an easy thing not to turn the ball over, to have answers against the blitz and to control the clock. But that's why you play there. It's a week in, week out league. We know that. Look at, I mean... Patrick Mahomes isn't his full self yet. The The Bengals are 0-3. Minnesota's 3 and Who knows anything at this current point in time? You have to be self-aware. Know yourself. Do the things that work best. Yeah. Sam Darnold, Justin Fields, 3-0. and We're living in the upside down, Gino. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all this league. None what of makes it makes this job fun because you come here every, five days a week and you're like, oh, day six? I don't know what's going to happen on that sixth day. Yeah, it's it's nothing makes sense. And that's why we love the NFL, because every year there is something that happens that doesn't make any sense. What well, makes a lot of sense for the Buccaneers if they want to win this game first run the ball. I, I, I'm with you on the both teams. Yep. Control the clock, establish the run. That's a big key for the Buccaneers. But if they're going to run the ball, they have to do it effectively. On the flip side, contain Saquon Barkley. If the Eagles are going to win this game, you have to force a weakened receiving core to step up and be the reason why. Force Jahan Dotson to be the playmaker. Yep, That's where the Bucs defense can really make some hay. And then finally, protect Baker Mayfield. The Eagles are going to get a heavy dose of Bucky Irving, who is one of the most elusive backs in the NFL without a lot of opportunity. Only 25 carries on the season, but he has 154 yards. He's averaging four yards a carry after contact. That is huge. The Bucs have to make sure that he is one of the focal points of this offense and really gets that run game going. Then you can bring in Rashad White to hit him with a little bit more power than elusiveness like Bucky brings. Protecting Baker Mayfield. I mentioned it earlier. One sack in week one. He's been sacked 12 times over the last two weeks. It is ruining what this offense is capable of because they haven't been able to protect Baker Mayfield. That can change if Luke Gedeke is good to go this week and make his return after missing the last two weeks with a concussion. And then you said it, Gino, Saquon Barkley is the best running back in the NFL right now. The Bucs are allowing the eighth most rushing yards per game in the NFL at 137.7. Most of those have come on the legs of Jaden Daniels and Bo Nix. They've been able to shut down some of these running backs. Also worth noting, the Eagles allow the ninth most at 134.7. But you have to contain Saquon Barkley and force Jalen Hurt to beat this defense with some average to below average receivers should A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith not play. I think you hit it right on the head, and it's going to be a chess match because that's what the NFL is each week. How can we get, let's say, 75% of our guys, because of injuries, in the best position against a team that they're in the same position you are? Injuries are a thing that happen in the National Football League. They were an excuse for you the last time you went down to Tampa Bay. Oh, we don't have A.J. Brown. This this thing has been terrible. We're got nine losses in our last 10 or whatever that ridiculous number was. There's no more excuses. You, you have a bye week next week. You got to just play with your hair on fire. And I think Tampa 
like you said, losing to Bo Nix, it's going to be a pissed off football team. I think it's going to be two football teams that realize, like you said, th this could be a lot to play for, man. I mean, look at you had to go on the road last year because of a tiebreaker to the Dallas Cowboys and you don't win the division. So it'll be a good rubber match. I really don't know who is going to win. I still think it's going to be a one score game. The Eagles, that's all they play are one score football games could be coming down to the last drive like it has every single week and that's how the eagles are they stress the hell out of me and i'm sure the same way with the bucks all right well that is going to do it for crossover thursday here on locked on eagles and locked on bucks please make sure that you are subscribed on youtube or on your favorite podcast platforms make sure that you're following on twitter gino is at gc24 underscore football i am at j yarko underscore bucks make sure you're coming back on friday both of these shows are going to give you the final previews and gino i'm guessing you guys are going to give score predictions i'll give score predictions when we have a little bit more injury information mm -hmm. to, to make some informed decisions but we want to thank each and every one of you for making locked on eagles and locked on bucks your first listen review every single day hope you have an outstanding day stay safe stay healthy and thanks so much for joining us right here on a crossover thursday